Hi everybody, welcome to Simple Art at Home with me, Laura Houston. Uh, today we are going to be learning about Cesar Chavez. We have a lesson about him uh, as well as an art lesson. But before we get into that, let's start off by taking a look at some fabulous student art that you have sent in to me. Let's take a look. Kids art. Thank you so much for sending in your art to me. I always keep my email right there on the bottom corner of the screen so that you always know how to reach me. I love seeing your work. Before we get started uh, learning about Cesar Chavez today, I wanted to tell you about a free seed packet giveaway program that's uh, uh, happening on April 3rd. It's the Founders Park Seed Kit Program as you can see here, it's the uh, it's drive through the Founders Park parking lot uh, on Saturday, April 3rd from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. and you get a free kit. Um, it is actually located at 400 North West Street in the Founders Park parking lot. And I will refer to this flyer a little bit later on during the show, but I think it's a great opportunity. So thank you. So today we are going to learn about civil rights activist Cesar Chavez, who fought for um, better working conditions for uh, migrant farm workers and farm laborers. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at a quick iMovie that I prepared for you ahead of time. Cesar Chavez Day is March 31st of every year. Cesar Chavez was a Latino American civil rights activist who fought against the mistreatment of farm laborers and migrant workers in a nonviolent way. Migrant farm worker. A migrant farm worker is someone who moves from farm to farm to work. Migrant farm workers usually move after harvesting crops seasonally. Labor union. A labor union is an organization of workers that is formed to protect the rights of its members. Cesar Chavez formed the United Farm Workers Union, and you can see the logo on the bottom right corner of the screen. Strike. If you strike, you refuse to work in order to force an employer to agree to demands. The word for strike in Spanish is huelga. Take a look at the picture. You can see Larry Itliong on the left. He was a Filipino-American farm worker and activist, and he partnered with Cesar Chavez and Dolores Huerta. Cesar Chavez was born on March 31, 1927, in Arizona. His family moved to California to work as migrant farm workers. While living in California, his family had a tough time making ends meet. That means earning enough money. Cesar attended over 30 different schools. His family moved from home to home in search of work. Every member of his family, including him, had to work. Difficult work for little pay. Their work ranged from season to season. In the spring, they picked cherries and beans. In the summer, it was grapes and corn. And by fall, they were re required to pick cotton. By winter time, they had to endure the harsh temperatures outside and pick peas and lettuce. The problem, or the paradox. Migrant farm workers were often mistreated by the farm owners. They were often underpaid. They were often not given breaks. Their housing options were limited and uncomfortable. Cesar knew that migrant farm workers deserved better working conditions and better pay he decided to fight for the rights for all migrant farm workers. Cesar began reading about advocators of change who did so in a peaceful way, including Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., 
and Gandhi. He felt that he too could bring about change in a nonviolent way. In 1962, Cesar co-founded the National Farm Workers Association. He went back to working in the fields to try and encourage other workers to join. People were hesitant to join. They thought that they would get into trouble. He called his movement for better working conditions La Casa, which means the cause. Cesar Chavez, Larry Itliang, and Dolores Huerta worked together to help farm workers in California. In 1965, Chavez and Huerta joined the strike that was started by union leader Larry Itliang. Itliang and many of the workers in his union were Filipino. This means that they came from the Philippines. Cesar and the United Farm Workers called for a strike against grape farmers and the unsafe and unfair working conditions opposed upon the farm workers. The group demanded that all Americans boycott eating grapes as a sign of support for their cause. If you boycott something, it means that you don't purchase that item or you don't go to stores that sell that item. In 1970, he and 67 other grape farm workers marched 340 miles to Sacramento, California to protest against these unfair conditions. Along the way, the group grew in size. By the time they arrived in Sacramento, there were thousands of workers protesting. Here you see a picture of Dolores Huerta. She is yelling into a megaphone, and she worked alongside Cesar Chavez. Historic victory. In the end, the grape growers signed a contract that allowed the farm workers to unionize with collective bargaining rights. This meant that all the farm workers could have a collective, unanimous voice in determining their rights and responsibilities as workers. Discussion question. How did Cesar Chavez succeed without resorting to violence? What leadership skills did Cesar use? You might want to pause at this point to have this discussion. Cesar continued fasting, speaking, and marching to fight against the following conditions. Long working days with low pay, long-term exposure to the mass use of pesticides, unsafe working conditions, unfair treatment, such as being fired for complaining, no restrooms, and no breaks. And people everywhere started to take notice. And farm owners realized that Cesar and his UFW were winning the fight. Cesar Chavez brought attention to the unfair treatment of migrant farm workers. He achieved his goals through nonviolence, persistence, and hard work. And if you take a look at the picture on the bottom, Cesar said, the fight is never about grapes or lettuce. It is always about people. So today we're going to create an art project with the theme of symbiosis. Now, symbiosis is the relationship between living things that live together and depend upon each other. So Cesar Chavez knew the importance of people working together for the greater good of all living things. So we are going to create a drawing that illustrates symbiosis. Let's do some art. So I hope you learned something new about Cesar Chavez. He was definitely an amazing man and he collaborated, uh, as you could see, with Larry Itliong and Dolores Huerta and many others uh, to help improve the lives of farm workers in California. So for today's art project, uh, you are going to need a piece of paper, a pencil, a good eraser, something to color with, and it would be helpful if you had a black pen to outline or um, maybe a black colored pencil or something like that to outline. And I'm gonna use watercolors today, but you can certainly use crayons or colored pencils. So I will meet you over at the table. Do you like our butterflies? I just love them. I just wanted to refer to this one more time. This is a great opportunity. Um, if your family wants to drive through the Founders Park parking lot, 
um, Saturday, April 3rd from 10 a.m. to noon, and you get this kit. And the kit says you get to choose from Anaheim chili pepper seeds, zucchini seeds, green beans, or beefsteak tomato uh, kits. Uh, and the kits contain a half gallon pot, soil, and an heirloom seed packet. And you have to wear your mask. It's like a, a drive through opportunity. And you get one kit per car. Okay, so I just thought um, that's something that seemed interesting. And this is hosted by the Anaheim Public Library and the Heritage Center of Anaheim. Okay, and third graders, you know, there are virtual field trips available um, to the Mother Colony House this year. Um, hopefully, when we are back in person, you will be able to start up those field trips again. So um, ask your teacher about those. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, get started on our art project. So there are a few vocabulary words that I will refer to as we are drawing today. And the first one I already mentioned in the slideshow, the word is symbiosis. And symbiosis is the relationship between living things that live together and depend on, on one another. And the relationship could be between people and animals or people and nature or just people all together or everybody. It's just this whole entire relationship. And this is something that Cesar Chavez knew was very, very important that we all uh, get along well together, respect one another and respect nature because we really depend on those fresh uh, fruits and vegetables um, for our survival. That um, the fresh fruits and vegetables that migrant farm workers and all you know farmers uh, provide for us on our table. You know we we don't realize because we just go to the grocery store or maybe the farmers market, um, but there's a lot of hard work that goes into that. Uh, for today's lesson, we are going to do sort of like a cutaway view of soil layers and plants. And I'm going to um, help you go through it step by step in a very simple way. But I wanted to show you some other options that I'm not going to do. But I know some of you really love drawing animals. And I want you to consider drawing some burrows. You know, we have some bunnies here and a fox. Um, maybe you want to show um, insects below the soil. I'm going to keep my drawing very simple, but... You know, if you want to, you can Google pictures like these. I think I Googled like cutaway um, soil layers um, illustration. So there's all kinds of interesting images that you can refer to. So get your pencils ready. Uh, we are going to first start by drawing a line that is below the halfway point. So this line, I'm just going to do like a light sketch here. And we're going to be showing some layers of soil. And you know that I always go over my art with a black pen. So in case it's too faint for you, I will go over it um, darker. And um, we're going to draw another section here that's going to be kind of like little um, grass. So, you know, this part will be green. And I'm just, I'm just letting my pencil just kind of like fly up and do little versions of grass or weeds right here. And this part I'm going to leave straight because we're going to have a plant coming up here. And then we can have some more grass coming like here, going off the page. Okay, so over here we're going to draw a small seed. And it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. It can just be something like this. And maybe I'm going to put a heart in the middle of the seed because this whole project is about uh, respect for one another, respect for nature, and it's the whole relationship that human beings have with, with nature and one another. Over here, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to draw another seed and I'm going to put a heart inside of it. And you can be any age to work on this art project. You can make it as simple or as complicated as you'd like. We're gonna start, so seeds form a little shoot. 
And there's also roots that come off of um, seeds. So we're going to start, this is going to become a twisty grapevine up here. But I'm going to take some time down here to kind of show roots branching out. Like the roots kind of go like this. I'm going to get my eraser ready. Maybe I'll just go ahead and do this with pen so that you can see it a little bit better. So let me just do that because I know this is going to be pen anyway. And I can just draw the first time with pen. So here's a seed. Maybe you want to do the seed in a different shape. It's entirely up to you. I'm keeping this just very simple. This is called conceptual art because we're kind of talking about a concept. There's a message behind it. Let's see. So I'm just going to draw like a twisty, some roots down here, coming, going all the way around, coming off of this seed. We're just going to surround it with some squiggly lines that are actually roots. Like this, coming back up and around, maybe like that. And I'm going to go over some of this with a darker, a thicker black outline. This is what I would normally do with a pencil, but I wanted you to be able to see it better. So I'm just kind of taking a risk. I'm not too worried about making a mistake with this because roots are more of, you know, an organic squiggly line. There's no really wrong way to draw roots. Okay, so I'm going to take it up like this. So at this point, I'm going to um, add some thin veiny lines coming off of it from here, like this. Kind of like, because roots reach out like that. And later I'm gonna, later I'll go through and, and darken it. And then we are also going to outline this layer right here. So this is going to be underground. You can decide whether or not you want to show this line crossing this plant. I think I'm going to decide not to have it cross. You know that I always practice my drawings ahead of time and the first drawing that I did, I didn't have it. I did cross it and it looked a little strange but it's not wrong. Some scientific drawings do show that line crossing. Okay, as far as under here, you might want to draw some little bugs in the soil. I'm gonna draw some pebbles, like some scattered rocks. You could draw a burrow down here with an animal in it, maybe some earthworms, because as you know, our soil is full of living things. There's so many reasons, so many good reasons for us as human beings to respect nature. There's so many creatures that rely on, you know, what's beneath our feet that we don't always think about. Here I'm going to fill this layer with little rocks. Right here. I don't know if you can hear that. I can hear the street sweeper going in front of my house right now. That's okay. Okay, I'm adding little pebbles and rocks to this layer. It's quite interesting if you ever look up scientific illustrations of soil levels and layers of rock beneath the earth's surface. I'm just going to continue with that. So this layer is rocky. If you've ever had to do some work in the yard with digging or planting, you'll know how many little creatures live in the soil. We recently did some work and we came across all kinds of worms and beetle-y type things. Okay, so um, so down here you could, as I said, you know, you can research this a little bit. So what we've drawn here, if we look at our vocabulary words, so we have the word seed, okay, and this is this is a seed. 
that hasn't sprouted yet, and here is a seed that has sprouted. And then I've drawn roots, and these are roots that have come off this seed and this plant that I will be drawing. And then we have soil and soil layers. And these are some soil layers here, what we don't see underneath the grass. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my thicker Sharpie to just kind of draw like what might be little blades of grass or weeds, because this part I'm going to color in green. So there's no wrong way. I'm just letting my pen go wherever it goes. I'm not being exact. I'm gonna stop here and go behind. You could add little flowers if you want to, but there we have that layer. I'm gonna take a moment to do some of this even thicker because I really want certain parts of my drawing to stand out with a very, uh, with a, a heavier line weight. So we call that a line weight, the weight of the line in art. It's always more interesting if you can use different line weights. Some will be thinner and more delicate, and some can be thicker line weights. And that's a, that's a tool or a, you know, it's a technique that illustrators uh, really use. So um, before I do anything else with heavier line weights, let's work on the grape vine. So we're going to come up here and it's gonna kind of like, you know, I better do this with pencil because there's certain parts that I don't want to cross over. <laughs> so this will kind of come up and, you know, maybe we'll have a leaf right here. I'm going to have one branch, I'm just gonna sketch this out. One branch will come here, one branch will come over here, and one will come down here. So that's kind of like the area that I will be working on. And so over here, I'm gonna draw some grapes. And it's nice if you can get them to overlap a little bit. And I will show you that in detail. Maybe we can have some here. Grapes do not have to be perfect circles, but if you want to, you can. We'll have another, so this vine will have some thickness to it. And then maybe we'll have it also branch off this way up here and we can have some grapes kind of going off the top of the paper. It's always interesting, I think, if your design uh, continues on where you can't really see it. And grape grapevines have these interesting little like curly cues that shoot off and little veiny things as well. And maybe some more leaves. I will clean this up as I go. You might want to just kind of step back and watch first. So we have some more grapes here. And you can do any number of grapes together. I, you know, if I do three grapes, you don't have to. You can do four grapes or five. Maybe you wanna make them bigger or smaller. Throw some leaves in there, you know, coming from behind. So here we have this coming up and I'm going to thicken this part of the vine and maybe we'll have it come off this way. We can have some more grapes over here. Something like this. I'm just sketching right now. Let you know that I always kind of sketch first to get like, you know, the positioning of where I want things. And then I'll go back and, and fix it a little bit nicer. Put a leaf maybe right here and maybe some leaves coming off of this one, maybe another leaf here. And maybe we'll have another kind of branch coming off this way, something like this. Let's see what this looks like if I clean it up a little bit more with pen. So I'm just, just getting my sketch down. 
Okay, so I'll use my thinner Sharpie and I'm going to have a leaf here, something like this. I'm not being exact with grape leaves. They don't look like this. They're a little wider. And I'm gonna draw these grapes. Make sure they kind of overlap. They'll look more realistic if you have them overlap like that. In fact, I can show you on a piece of paper. So if you want to show grapes or circles overlapping, so just draw one circle like this, and then kind of draw one behind it like that. And you can add another one like this. You can keep going. And you can make some smaller, but that's how you overlap. So one, you start with one full circle. Okay. I'm just going to keep going with this. Maybe we'll have some smaller leaves here. it in like once we add color it will really transform our drawing let's put some more curly cues there are these little strange curls that come off of grapevines if you've ever seen them before you can look you can look up images if you know whenever you're drawing something for reference you can look up images on Google to compare. Okay, we're gonna have some more come this way. I'm gonna put some grapes here. I'll go through and erase some of these pencil lines so it's not as confusing for you. But it's starting to look a little better. But re remember, we first just sketched Add some more curly cues coming off. I think that looks better. We can add some, maybe some lines here to show the 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 twisted wood. Let me take that smaller. Okay, so I I will erase some of my overlapping pencil lines going through the grapes. And then I'm going to show you how to add heavier line weight. And if you have a black crayon, you can do this with a black crayon as well. Sometimes I don't erase my pencil because I'm just sketching and learning. But if you feel like the pencil is too distracting to your original uh, piece of art, then you might want to erase it. There, I'm just cleaning it up a little bit. That's much better. Okay, so... Um, we're still going to add something over here, uh, but let's just focus on, on this first of all. I'm going to add some thickness in certain parts. I think the heart is very important, and I think this original seed is very important. So I'm darkening that. Anything that's important that you want to make it stand out, you can outline it. And then here, I am going to outline just the perimeter of my roots and I'm not outlining the little wispy veiny parts on the end. I'm going to stop because I do want that little veiny part to remain thin and veiny. Okay. And you'll see that it, it makes your art look more interesting if you use heavier line weight in certain parts. It takes a little while, but it's worth it. So while we are doing this, we can kind of think about the fact that, you know, Cesar Chavez knew that it was, you know, very important for all people to respect one another 
and work together and to not be violent. He was a good leader because he believed in nonviolence in order to get his point across. Here, I'm again, just outlining the perimeter. See how I do that? Not doing the little thin wispy lines, just the perimeter, the outside edge of my grape plant. But the idea of symbiosis um, comes from the fact that, you know, we all, we all rely on um, one another, including nature and including animals. It's such an important um, concept. There's a very delicate balance. And that's why we added this heart down here, you know, to just remember the importance of caring for our planet and your fellow neighbor. And when I say neighbor, I don't mean the person right next door to you can be the person right next door to you, but I mean your fellow, you know, your fellow citizens who live in Anaheim with you or anyone. So again, I'm just outlining the perimeter and already you can see how it's making our grape vine really stand out. Kind of, uh, in a way, you know, I said that this was conceptual art. This, you know, this grapevine represents life. Okay, I'm almost done outlining this. Okay, bring it around. We're also going to add the human element because so far we've added plants and all nature and soil and maybe you added some little animals burrowing now i'm going to add the human element which we're going to show uh, a human watering the earth like through a watering can so just start we're going to draw kind of like an ellipse right here and then we'll, we can draw a smaller ellipse or oval. And then if you just connect it like that, this becomes the like the mouth of the watering can. Okay, this is going to be a watering can. And this kind of will just go straight, straight like that. So let me show you with my Sharpie. So now all we have to do is go over this elliptical shape, okay, and then bring it up here like this, and then back, and maybe just show a line here and here. So I'm going to thicken this line because this is important. To me, This we didn't use a cloud, we didn't use nature. This is how we're incorporating the human part of symbiosis. The humans, whoever this person is who's in their garden watering, is helping the soil and the plants and the little bugs and the burrowing animals. And then what we can add, why don't we add some openings here? So again, we're gonna we're going to draw little um, ovals in the same direction. This is where the water would come out. And then why don't we show, I'm gonna erase this little one. Why don't we draw some drop droplets? And we can make them different sizes, but they kind of start like this, like a, a water drop or a maybe a teardrop. They can all be different. Sometimes I think it looks better if you make them different sizes, some big, some small. We can make one coming over here. There, let's make one up here too. Okay, and this is this represents the human, the, the person, part of this whole symbiotic relationship. Okay, 
So let me just look this over. Um, when I paint this, I'm going to put a little bit of blue, like in a crescent shape here, but I'm going to leave the rest of the droplets paper color. So I'm just going to hold this up for you so you can get a, a clear shot of what I've done so far. And you know, I, I kind of rushed through this. My lines are not perfect. If you want to take your time and make it perfect, you can, but sometimes it's not about being perfect. You really don't have to. The whole point is that uh, you're enjoying this whole process and having fun. And at the same time, also, you know, this is a tribute uh, to Cesar Chavez. So I am going to put away my pens and things that I no longer need, and I'm going to take out my paints. And I have my color um, sheet right here, which I'm going to keep off to the side. And I have water. Okay, so I'm going to start with the red hearts because this whole goes back to the idea of you know respecting everyone respecting nature and animals and other human beings even people especially people who are different from you okay and i'm going to let that red dry and then i'm going to come back to it why don't we start with um, this first soil layer right here, which we put a few little rocks in. I'm gonna use I'm gonna use some brown here. And I might go back in and and paint you know some black over where the little rocks would be if I have time. So these are the soil layers. And again, you can use any color, any colors that you like. You don't have to use real world colors because obviously there's not a real world heart <laughs> on seeds. This is conceptual art where our art is telling a story and the fun thing about that is you can use any color that you want like think about what color you want to you know this is a plastic watering can it can be any color or maybe it's metal it's entirely up to you so i am going to shift um, to more brown and i'm going to start painting this uh, grape vine uh, what's below the surface, I'm going to have it brown, and then I'm going to transition to green. I think that would look interesting. So, and remember, you can add whatever you want. Maybe you want to add some little earthworms. I can show you what that might look like. I can draw a little earthworm. There are definitely earthworms under the in the soil under the grass. That's why the little birds come out um, in the morning and look for those worms that might come to the surface. The birds depend on the earthworms for survival as well, for food source. Okay. All right, let me just draw a quick worm for you. So if you wanna see what that would look like, and it'll just be cartoony. I'll just put something, it could just be kind of floating in here. Like you could just do something like this. If you wanna make it cartoony, you can even put a little, some little eyes on it. How about that? But you don't have to. You could put some little line, uh, curves you know, things like that. You could give it a smile. <laughs> There's a little worm. Earthworms are like a pinkish, reddish color. Okay. 
And why don't I, I can add some little color to him. Okay, and I think, um, why don't we continue with our grapevine plant. I'm gonna mix uh, brown and green here because it is, like this part is the thick wood, but it's also, I wanna make sure, like green is usually a, you know, a symbol of life. It's a color that's symbolic with life. So I'm gonna mix green and brown through here. There we go. See how it's a mixture of some green and brown. I'm going to add a different color green for the leaves. Now our drawing is going to come to life a bit more with color. Wait till we fill in the grapes. I think I'll use a purple for the grapes. So I've got these leaves. While I'm using green, why don't I go ahead and fill in our green grass layer here, part of the soil. Did you notice in that slideshow about Cesar Chavez how you know, he, he was influenced by Dr. Martin Luther King and by Mahatma Gandhi. And Mahatma Gandhi used to um, fast. And, I, and by fast, that means where you, if a person fasts, he or she stops eating to bring attention to a cause or um, an event. And Gandhi used to fast. And so Cesar Chavez also used that method um, to bring attention. And um, it, it was hard on his body. Like he, he would go long periods of time without, he would, I, I believe when you fast, you can still drink because it's very dangerous. Uh, it's dangerous either way, but you know, your body definitely needs water. But um, that was something that was a, a peaceful, it was a way of peaceful protest. Down here, I'm mixing a little bit of, first I'm putting water on my paper. If you're using watercolors, I'm putting water first because I don't want the black to be very, uh, really strong. So I'm kind of mixing brown and black down here. And I'm not going to do the whole thing just because I have so much to paint for you today, but I will do well it's more of a suggestion of color down here because it is dark you know seeds need that darkness to germinate and we can add some more brown down here and again you can get as detailed as you want add some cute animals burrowed down here showing that we all depend on each other okay why don't we, I'm still waiting for this to dry a little bit more before I add color to the seeds. Why don't we add some grape color? So I will use purple and I'm just going to start by maybe leaving a highlight spot. I'll do a few grapes and then hold up my paper so you can see how I'm doing this. I want the look, you know, of the grapes to be spherical or round. So I'm going to leave, I'm leaving some shiny hot spots on the same part of each grape. And I'm, again, I'm just kind of letting my paintbrush uh, go where it goes. I'm going to hold that up so that you can see that. You see that method that I'm using? So it kind of shows a little white spot. I'm leaving a little white spot on each grape. In the same spot on each grape, roughly. I'm not measuring, I'm just 
dabbing paint and water and the whole idea will come through once you see it once you once a person looks at it you know from a distance you'll they'll be able to recognize that these are round grapes And some are a little bit lighter than others. That's okay. And I like the way that these kind of go off the paper. I think that's also important to, to, to do that. There we go. We have some grapes. And why don't we add... Hmm, I'm going to work on, since my brush is clean, let's put a little blue inside these water droplets, like a little curved shape here. Just a little hint of blue to show that it's water. Not the whole thing, but just a little hint. And then why don't we, I think I'm going to use orange for this watering can. I think because I think orange will look nice against the uh, blue sky. And if we want, we can use leave a little hot spot. I've, I've showed you how to do that, like a little highlight spot where it might catch the light. So I left a little highlight spot right there. And then just to make things interesting, I think I'll add some red, like maybe some red right here. I like mixing colors. And then why don't we put red down here? on this part. So there's a little bit of a contrast. Like part of it is orange and part of it is red. And I think both of those colors will look great against the blue background of the blue sky. Okay. And I could, you know, I could just darken this a little bit here can add a darker color because those are holes, like they're openings. So usually we want it darker rather than lighter. There. And uh, let's do some sky around here. I'm gonna add a little more water to this to kind of soften these colors here. I'm just gonna fade some blue around this part. It'll be lighter as it gets lower on the paper. We'll just kind of drag the color out down here in between over here as well. See how there's still paint on my brush and it's just a subtle. I'll put some more here. Oh, I forgot to paint that little leaf. <laughs> it's okay. I can go back and do it now. Adding blue, and now the colors are really starting to make our symbiotic <laughs> symbiosis or our symbiotic image, our drawing, come to life. Just kind of using a lot of water with the sky so the paint just kind of flows with a natural look. Add some more over here. And we're almost finished. Fill this in a little bit. You now you can add as much or as little of the sky as you would like to. Just gonna, I just want to make sure that it's throughout all parts of it here. Maybe some more over here. Something like that. Okay, let's finish this little leaf. We don't want to leave him unfinished. Okay, and then our seeds, we want to finish the seeds. So you can use any color that you want for the seeds. I, I don't know, I'm drawn to yellow right now. I just want to, I kind of want them to stand out. There we go. Seeds can also be a teardrop shape. Sometimes they're all, seeds are all different 
shapes if you've ever picked up, um, opened up a seed packet before. Okay, so uh, let's just take a look at um, what we've done here. So um, this whole idea is um, the idea of symbiosis and we have the human element, like the human is, is tenderly loving the, the land, the nature, which helps everything. It helps the seeds grow. It helps the insects under the soil. It helps the plants grow. Whereas then we eat the plants, like we require fresh fruits and vegetables in our diet, you know, in order to be healthy human beings. So this is the idea of symbiosis or a symbiotic relationship. And we have, we have seeds, we have roots, there's soil here and soil layers. And we have grapes. These are the grapes. This is the grape vine with its curly cues. And this is the watering can. Okay. So I am going to meet you back up at the easel. So I really hope that um, you add your own special touches to our uh, symbiosis art project, which honors Cesar Chavez. And um, go ahead and check out the free seed kit giveaway on April, what day is that? Where's my flyer? It's April 3rd. April, oh, there it is. April 3rd. Uh, thank you, Mr. Houston. From 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. to get a kit as kits are available. Uh, before we leave, um, I just want to remind you, take pictures of your art and send it in to me and I may show it on a future episode. And before I go, let's take one last look at that fabulous student art and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Kids Art See you next time.